<laughs> There's a bell fast word for that as well. Tell me when to start now. Go! The New Oxford Dictionary gives two definitions of culture. Firstly, the arts and other manifestations of human intellectual achievement regarded collectively. That's inclusive, welcoming, open. It's what we share as humans, what separates us from the monkeys. There's clearly plenty of this to be seen on the streets outside tonight. The culture that is not the monkeys. Secondly, the second definition, the customs, arts, institutions and achievements of a particular nation, people or other social group. That is an ex exclusive definition about what separates us, what makes us better than them is, what makes one bunch of monkeys different from another, and what passes for culture in Northern Ireland. For instance, there's the celebration of cider and love bites that is the 11th night bonfire. And the St. Patrick's Day parade of Celtic shirted vomit draped teenagers. By definition, sincere and cherished manifestations of our culture. But, speaking as one who is culturally schizophrenic, I find both equally embarrassing. Because, as well as being meaningless and destructive, in both cases, culture is used as a weapon. We're good at that here. We've seen Sinn Féin colonise the Irish language with imperialist zeal. So that now, by choosing a school, you can brand your child with religion and politics by the age of five. Then there's the DUP's cultural offensive, hoodwinking 70% of us to vote Ulster Scots. So that now millions are spent on languages ancient and make yuppie. <laughs> Politicians, though, have been interfering with cultural manners since they saw there were votes in it. Although there's not much in it for us except face painting and fireworks. What local governments like to call community art. Ooh, we got quiet now. Huh? It has been said that everyone has a novel in them. I'd like to add that fortunately most people leave them there. All art must be for the people, but too much art by the people means losing all quality control. It's an illusion of democracy that all art is equal, and all artists are equal, or that anyone who calls themselves an artist deserves an exhibition. Stalin knew the value of true arts. Ceausescu banned Hamlet in Romania. Dario Fo was imprisoned in Italy because the arts are truly democratic and can provoke revolutions in thought and perspective. That's why our government can't cope with them. Because they despise and distrust the educated and imaginative, preferring, preferring to laud and celebrate the ignorant or indolent. Florence named its airport after the father of modern science. Liverpool after the man who redefined music while we name ours after an alcoholic football. As a writer, as a writer, as a writer, I've always believed publishing a novel, a poem, or a play to be an act of real bravery. But now it seems the act of writing itself matters more than the words. Our society seems determined to celebrate process over product. The act of creating more important than the creation. So now we live in a place that lauds valiant effort with little recognition for talent, intellect, imagination, creativity, or hard work. How else would Derry seriously be considered the city of culture? <laughs> but the artists have sold out too. The artists must take some blame. We got fat and lazy. We paid for marketing, feasibility studies, and the bloated, centrally hated Arts Council. Artists have allowed themselves to become teachers and social workers. In pursuit of accessibility, we forgot the audience. We sought inclusivity at the expense of excellence. And targeted social need, thank you, instead of shooting burning arrows at the monster society that created it in the first place. Now the funding for the arts is tight, it's time to rationalise radically. To cut back the thistles so the real green shoots can break through. Time was, final paragraph, our culture, our culture was defined by poets, painters, comp composers and playwrights. Now it's run by politicians, civil servants and spin doctors. We can still be proud of our people, but the city itself has become a monument to consumerism. A podium for profit and a graveyard for our cultural heart. Yeah.